All right. Welcome home, Bitcoin Truth Seekers. Well, it is the week end, and it is Saturday, January 8th, 10.01 a.m. here in the Arizona desert. As always, BitcoinDelayView.com. Got more for you there. I um, wanted to mention that news stories and such that I do talk about, I do post in Telegram and sometimes Discord. I need to get a little bit better with Discord, but uh, as far as you know, news stories and such like that, those I just post there because the BitcoinDelayView.com page is just kind of static. I don't. It's just it's just an HTML page and it's kind of a pain in the ass to edit. With that said, everybody, as you may have noticed, it is a red day in the market. Not much green going on. So, well, there you have it. This is pretty accurate. It's a red day in the market. Bitcoin just can't fail hard enough. I wanted to take a look here at. Hmm. Let's look first here at this. One second, let's wind our way over. I've been watching the bears and the bulls, the, the whales, manipulate what goes on here. Check it out. $1.7 million buy. That's freaking amazing. Um, so anyway, I've kind of been watching the chart here. Um, it's kind of fun. I do love this thing. Um, I'm going to link to this. I edited it. I made a new layout, which is just kind of simple. I'll put it here in the uh, live stream chat. So it is there. I'll make it a comment also. And I'll post it over right now, this very second, over at uh, the Bitcoin Daily View Telegram. I'll stick it there. Um, this is a lot of fun to watch. And, you know, to me, it's all about uh, Lord Kelvin back in the day. He's when I came up with the measurement, the Kelvin. Um, he said, you know, to measure is to know. And you need to hang out with things and measure them. And you need to know where they've been. If you don't know where you've been, you don't know where what today means, right? So, um any measurement you do on a regular basis and hang out with, you're gonna it's gonna mean something to you. Like, watch this, check it out. Look at these cells coming in, cells coming in, cells coming in, and now the buys are fighting it. This right here, we're actually seeing this live. Look at that. We're, we are watching a bear and bull battle, whale battle right here. Look at that. Boom. One point seven million dollar buy right there. Um, look at these cells, and then look at look at the chunks that, that they're buying and selling in, and the speed of that. You know, I do think you do have a lot of institutional trading, big money trading, which is fairly automated. You can see the numbers that, that they play with. I mean, some is automated, some is somewhat automated. Uh, I, you know, anyway, if, if it's something to watch because you start to get the uh, you start to know the um, mood of the market. And you can also tell by the by the change in buy orders. Uh, you start to get an idea of what the market is going to do. So this is a really interesting indicator. If you just care to watch it once in a while, like while you're trading, put it on a monitor or an iPad over there and just, you know, you're just in a laptop or something, just kind of watch it. You'll start to understand the uh, what the whales are actually doing who are manipulating. You know, you can actually watch it taking place. And so I think this is just a very fun thing to watch. Um, I get a lot out of it. Like I noticed today that the... Um, uh, we're getting a lot of you know million dollar uh, buy orders in recently this morning, and at the same time, we're seeing a lot of larger than usual uh, sells, like half million dollar sells, you know, like two hundred and three hundred and K sells. So we're just seeing a real the the uh, um, the uh, they're working it. I'm kind of watching this, and you can sort of see there is a real desire to push this sucker down. Look at this. Okay, a bunch of buys come in. Anyway, I'm not gonna like belabor it, but really. It's worth watching, and you can see the wrecks too. If you if you put it in there, um, you can configure this thing. Anyway, it is grooving. Um, it's pretty darn fun. I like to see that. You can also look at. Let's look at um, real quick. Let's throw liquidations in there. Yeah, you can see. Look at that. A bunch of uh, longs got liquidated with this dump here. A good deal of liquidations happened there. So um, you know. It's how it rolls. Well, anyway, guys, let's keep on rolling here. I don't want, don't want to belabor that. I just think it has a real value in seeing the mood of the market and what the bears and the and the and the bulls are actually doing. You know, um, it. I find it helpful. Uh, with that said, as you can see, we're right in the market. Uh, Bitcoin trade volume. I I remorse. I have great sorrow. It doesn't work anymore. Um, we have this sort of piece of junk as far as what is the volume for today. Uh, it's not high. How about that? It's explicitly the Bitcoin trading volume against USDT. I don't know what that means. It's at 1.5K right now or about, you know, like 1.3K, but I don't know what that really means. Is that like that times Bitcoin volumes? Bitcoin, which would be around like what? Like 
that could be like what is that 60 or 6 billion anyway maybe this is accurate i need to work on it a little bit more to actually give you something meaningful sorry i have not had a chance to do that yet uh but looking at spot trading volume this is good enough to see right here this kind of tells the whole dang story um, we are 11.6 billion in trading volume on spot pairs on Binance plus 24 hours, down 51%. That is wretched volume for spot trading. Coinbase at 3 billion, down 51% also. So, absolute poop value for volume for spot on Binance and Coinbase. For derivatives, we're at 40 billion, down 51%, that's 24 hours. Um, and then we're uh, I'm not even seeing Coinbase on here. So, anyway, they, they don't do that, do they? Anyway, guys, um, really, volume is absolutely potty. I mean, it's uh, it's really, really, really pretty damn terrible. So we're rolling into the weekend pretty darn week, and uh, it's just not a beautiful thing. Uh, bulls and bears are battling right here. You can watch. But if we look at a trend here, you can kind of see which way it's going. It's going down. These big-ass sell orders are just crushing Bitcoin. They're fighting back. I mean, oh goodness, usually you can at least see, here's something I usually see here. I don't know if I can make a mark on this thing. Usually, okay, if we look right here, okay, this line, let's pretend there's a line right there, okay? And then this is a line right here, like that, like right, like right in here, like from like, here's the top, here's the bottom. Usually you at least see a range going on where they're kind of like trading back and forth. They're kind of on that conference call and they're, they're you know, they're working it. When you see action like this, in my opinion, dumps like this, um, you know, and you, you see the, the, the aggressive battle back and forth, definitely. Um, you know, that's when things are getting out of hand. That's when the battle is real. And uh, I think they're really just straight up duking it out or maybe not. Maybe it's just supposed to look that way. But, you know, oftentimes if you pull enough data here, you will see ranges that they're playing in like here at perfect top, perfect bottom. They're buying and selling. They're shorting, shorting and longing back and forth. You know, and you ask me, there's some conference calls going on, but when it starts really getting volatile like this, I think that's when it's a, you know, it's a monster truck. It's, it's a monster truck rally. You might pay for a whole seat, but you'll only need the edge Look at that million dollar sell and bam, down it goes. Anyway, uh, I'll let you guys watch that at your leisure. Sorry, I'm probably like, like boring the crap out of you. I'm kind of belaboring it. Anyway, here's something I picked up on over at uh, Blockchain Education. A link to in the show description, a link to over Bitcoin Daily View, um, them and Trade Genius, essential things to be a part of. But I will say over at Blockchain Education, uh, one of the pros there, he did mention this. Now, we all know the fear and greed index is at 10, right? That's not new news to anybody. And it kind of tends to freak people out, right? But check this out, okay? Um <clears throat> He made a point, uh, uh, M Mouse over there made a point. We've only, that in 2021, we did hit 10, the fear and greed index, one, two, three, four times. Hit a fear and greed index of 10, four times, and each time, bam, 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 bam. We had an 18% run, 18% run, 13% run, 45% run. So to be there again in 2022, if we look at 2021, we hit 10, one, two, three, four times, it was bam, a moment. So is the fear and greed index at 10 a seriously bullish buy signal? Well, I mean, how much harder can Bitcoin dump? I'm a little bit hesitant to, uh, you know, hedge in. I already hedged in a little bit and decided I'm going to stop hedging back in because I still don't know where the bottom is. I'm happy with where I'm at as far as my, you know, long-term hodl swing uh, account that I have for Bitcoin. I'm just going to let it be. I'm going to let it recover. I'm not going to try to buy any more dip right now. Um, but... We're at grading index grade and fear index 10, and that is pretty darn wonderful. I like what we're seeing. I can give you a brief look at the uh, blockchain education uh, chat here. Um, this so you guys can see. Let me go back to this here. I'm going to reference that. As you can see, always stuff going on here. And he mentions, uh, M Mouse mentions, there were only four days in all of 2021 where the F and G fear and greed hit 10. And each time it only lasted for one day, followed by bam, an upward movement. And also it's never gone lower than 10. So this is the kind of badass info you get while we're chatting all day over there. If you're a member of Blockchain Education and uh, Trade Genius over here, they're pretty badass too. Great things going on. So like I say, these are essential to my uh, profitability, my well-being, these two groups. Um, I invite you to check it out in 2022. Fear and Greed Index 10. It doesn't really go below 10. Every time it's been below 10 in 2021, those four times, as we can see, we had a bam, 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 rocket ship to Pluto followed. 
well, take that for what it's worth. All right. Once again, uh, volume is pure crap this morning. Um, I don't know what this means over at Bitcoinity.org, how to, how to read this volume for you. I need, I need, I need to make this mean something that I can uh, give you better because that I, I'll, I'll figure out. I need to do some. I was looking at it this morning. I couldn't quite figure out how to really report it. I want to give you a number like this many billion. You know, I, I don't want to. This doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. 1.5K. Is that 1.5K times Bitcoin's price, which would give you like, what, is that 6 billion or so or 60 billion? Anyway, like I say, I'm not going to belabor it. I'll figure this out and get you a better report for that daily. Um, let's just look at uh, open interest, um, uh, contract type, all 13.8 billion is the open interest right now. Open interest change, that's 24 hours, is negative 1.73. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Of course, Binance itself has 4.6 billion of that. So you can see where it's going on. Anyway, um, look at perpetual and futures. Basically, uh, perpetual are 39% of that, and future are 62% of that. For you people who care about the open interest stuff, I do like this. Anything else here? Um, yeah, anyway, and you can see that uh, average one hour for that's the price. When we look at open interest itself, aggregate open interest, as you can see. If we look overall, this is a hourly chart. Let's look at a daily chart here. Okay. As we can see, overall, the open interest definitely took a dump recently. It's been kind of sideways. So open interest is fairly sideways, not doing anything too dramatic. Uh, once again, just to, to look at that $1.1 $1 .1 million buy. Woo! I like it. Just saying, oh, another million dollar buy. Now see the bulls are fighting back. This is fun to watch. And you know, like I say, I won't belabor it, but you'll get to know the, the attitude and mood of the market and what it's doing. Right now, we are in dump territory. Look at that downtrend. I mean, whole gird your loins, guys. Um, the bull the million dollar sell. Man, they're 2.5 million dollar sell. They're like, they're like, it's going down, you know. Liquidations, where are they happening? More on the um uh, long side than the short side right now. Boom. All right. Looking at uh, longs versus shorts um, on Binance, where that volume is, 76% uh, long, 23% short for Bitcoin. For Ethereum, 73% long, 26% short. Now, here's the deal. This is it's kind of one of the things that gets me. Um, we're looking at a daily chart here for Bitcoin. So we are under the 200 moving average, which is white. Uh, the blue one is the 314 and the green is the is the uh, moving average, uh, 50 moving average. As you can see, daily MACD histogram is still widening towards the wrong side. And we just have a free fall. That MACD is moving away from the signal. The histogram is widening. Mm. We're under the heartbeat of it. We are in dump territory. Um, we can, uh, I would note this. Okay, here's something just to uh, to to check out. I think which may have value. Let's look at this. Um, we are kind of in a spot of previous support and um, resistance right now, as you can see. We definitely have played with this zone before. Um, so let's see what happens. This is a logical, you know, a, a place that we could bounce uh, if we want to be creative. Let's roll. Let, let's do this. Let's come go back here. I'm gonna go way back here. I'm going to do a Fibonacci sequence, pull a lot of data in, and that doesn't really stick to much. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, it could be. Dot five, once again, will be 50. It would be now nah, like 36,000. Well, there you go. And if we go way back when we started running up here, back in like uh, March of 2020, um, pull all this data in, you know, we are at a previous support and resistance area. And, um, you know, maybe we'll bounce here. We certainly have had action before here. This is definitely a sticky spot. What if I, uh, can I do something like, let's go right to the 200 moving average when we crossed on daily. Well, it's, it kind of works too. That's kind of creative. That's a dot five of 38,000, could be. Let's take a, a, a fib sequence and go right here. Um, uh, the 786 is around 37,000 there. Let's be very technical. Let's go right here. When we started moving up right about there. And that would actually be, if we look, when we started running up, that, that's giving it all back and then bouncing. So if you look at different time frames, in my opinion, the FIB sequence and also the uh, previous support resistance shows here on the daily that we very well may could be um, uh, in the right place for a bounce. You know, we are free falling, really. And you know who decides when we stop free falling? These guys. Okay. So, you know, 
That's the truth. With that said, let me actually go back to where we crossed the 200 moving average right about here. I know it's going to happen if I do that. Uh, let's go. Let's let's try to fire up. Kind of, do I have a VPVR hitting here? VPVR. Let's try it. Let's configure that. Yeah, you know, more than anywhere we have, you know, volume down there. But let's just move this visible range to, uh, let's move that around a little bit. You know, definitely have some, you know, I'm not going to belabor this. This is, this is not really too interesting. Anyway, forget it. I was trying to do something there, but it just didn't work out. Anyway, with that said, um, four-hour chart, okay, here for Bitcoin versus USDT. I'm starting this chart way back on the uh, uh, July, like uh, 20th of July when we started running up. Um, as you can see, we uh, are down here. We didn't get stopped by the 618 pocket. We are below it. If we went down to the 786, that'd be uh, here, that'd be 37,800. So if you look, you know. 37,000, 38, 39, you know, a uh, thousand. When you start looking at the uh, FIB sequences, it's definitely a sticky spot for a bounce. Hmm. If we really dump that hard, although looking at the four hour chart here, we do have this, the, the, the most volume within this visible range is uh, 40, it was right at around 47,180. That very well might be like a magnetic attraction to pull Bitcoin up. So what's going to happen? Hard to tell. Uh, looking at the four hour chart here, you can see um, definitely once again we are at a place of previous support and resistance in the chart so a probable possible bounce point but guys just be ready i mean if you're hedged out and you want to you know you know, scale in i mean do so not financial advice and purposes only but i tell you what i'm gonna put i'm gonna tell you right i'm gonna do this okay um after I'm done with this, I'm going to go into three commas. I love it. I always use it. I'm going to put a limit order in at like 39,000 and 38,000 and like, like, like 39,000, then like 38,500 and then like 38,000. Just, just put limit orders in just a little hedge. Cause I mean that, that really could be, it's just a, that that's kind of one of those like hail Mary limits. Hey, you know what I'm saying? If it, if it plummets right past it on the way down, which I really hope it does not still, it's a good dollar cost average spot. Looking at 45 minute chart, once again, that little line that I drew earlier is still there. You can see on the 45 minute chart also, if I don't blow my GPU up, which I'm probably gonna do, come on, try harder little machine. Open this up some, here's a 45 minute chart, pulling in lots of data here. And as you can see where we are at right now, there's definitely a place that we've had uh, support and resistance in the past. Let's see if I can actually my GPU can handle it. Come on, you can do it. I'm running a, a pretty badass Linux machine, uh, running uh, Pop OS, the latest uh, Linux on there. And uh, I've got, a, I forget the CPU, it's an AMD, but it's a really badass CPU. And uh, I have a um, NVIDIA 1070 Ti. Uh, people have asked me about that. And uh, the Ti is pretty darn good. Um, with that said, you can see previous support and resistance in the chart. Uh, could be a probable, you know, possible bounce spot. Here in the 45 minute chart, let's uh, nix that expand this out some if we look at the indicators here i mean we still are just kind of these still are not very inspiring but it does show you know what it doesn't show a damn thing i, I can't tell you what's going to happen here i mean our, our, we are showing oversold here on the um uh stochastic rsi laser burn index is beginning to kind of show a little bit of a uh, possible turnaround care i is popping up it's just that we're just we're just kind of in dump territory bottom of the rsi cave let's see what happens i mean I, I think this is going to turn around when, honest to God, the whales decide it turns around. You know, um, looking at a four hour chart, if we look, the uh, indicators here are still, I mean, the Witch Monster later, later by Lazy Bear is actually, it almost is showing a turn up after a really, really heavy oversold here on the four hour chart, but now the tangent is changing its mind. The four hour Witch Monster later by Lazy Bear, which I do have over at BitcoinDealer.com, you can check it out. Um, uh, it's linked to there. It's a really, really, um, it's a really, really harsh but true indicator. Definitely on the four hour chart, it has a lot of power for Bitcoin. I will keep rocking. All right, Ethereum versus USDT. Um, it's kind of doing what Bitcoin is doing. Um, I do like, see, when, when you are this low, below the 200 moving average, and you're dumping like this, it's kind of the same like with Bitcoin. This is just dump. We're just dumping. You know, we are dumping. And um, 
you know, the, the, the turn up depends on, on these guys duking it out. You know, there's a million dollar buy. Thanks for uh, helping out. Um, you know, really uh, watch these guys, watch what, what trend, what tends to happen by looking at the different change in the buy and sell chunks that they're doing. And you, and you get to know right now I can see by the, by the, the, the number, um, whenever they start getting above like a hundred K, like 110, 120 K, 101 K, whenever, like when, when, when they're doing that, when they're just buying and selling little chunks like that, that's one thing. But when you start seeing these larger chunks, that's when they're duking it out. That's when, that's when I, I tend to see the whales trying to push it one way or the other. You know, it looks to me like somebody wants to dump this thing this morning. It just does. Um, you know, I mean, it could all be in my mind, you know, like, you know, I could be as nuts as the farmer who thinks they were abducted by aliens who maybe was, you know what I'm saying? But just saying, you know, it's, uh, I, I, you know, anyway, Ethereum versus, uh, BTC. Um, I would love to get in on this trade. I'm watching this very, very closely watching here on the four hour chart too. I do think when the market turns around, Ethereum could outperform Bitcoin as far as recovery. It would be a sweet ass trade. I am watching it very closely. The four hour chart does not look like really a buy zone to me. The 45 minute chart does not look like a buy zone to me. Really, I don't think this is going to be a play until Bitcoin turns around and then takes Ethereum with it or Ethereum just decides to run for some reason. I'm watching this one because my favorite trade against BTC is ETH. All right, ONG, um, it was really looking good yesterday. It dumped with Bitcoin's volatility. It's below the 10 moving average right now. Kind of bottom of the RSI cave. It's approaching the 314 moving average. The indicators are not looking too incredible. So ONG for me personally is not something I'm really watching today. Sol versus USDT. I love it. I love Sol. I mean, do not be surprised if it, uh, if, if it you know, whether it's one above or one below, if it's right there with um, Ethereum this year, I bet you in the top 10. Um, and with that said, uh, it doesn't look good. It's just dumping. It doesn't have any fight in it, but let's look at Saul, Saul versus BTC. How's that for a trade? Saul versus BTC, totally ass hammered also. So anyway, guys, I love Saul. Um, I'm gonna keep watching it. Uh, but it's not a trade right now. A uh, soul, not Saul. Uh, not Solana, but Soul, which is really also known as Phantasma. Um, it's kind of inspiring. I like what it's doing. It had this beautiful upwards channel recently. It broke below it. It ranged between the 314 and 200 moving average for a while. It broke above the 314. It got above the 200 yesterday for a little while here in the 45 minute chart. Uh, I should say last night it got above. Now it's now it's fighting it again. It's trying. I like this. I like alts like this that are like saying, "Hey, look, man, we're gonna run. We're not gonna, you know, f Bitcoin. We're not gonna just sit here and dump. You know, we're gonna make stuff happen." The chart looks pretty good to me. How's it look on the four-hour chart? Four-hour chart's just a little bit moving average. Four-hour chart's still moving up. Indicators looking good, looking good. Um, you know, it's a risky time right now. I'm going to wait for this strong break, you know, something like this, get a strong break above the 200, come down, bounce, boom, like that. I'm going to watch this thing, and uh, I think that will be a pretty groovy moment, especially here's a weird-ass thing that I do, and you guys can, uh, you know, at, at your own risk, try this insanity. I'm just saying it's something that I like to do. This is totally non-scientific, okay, but it's something that I, I do. I oftentimes watch, if you had an upwards channel like this and you broke it and you went low, extend it. Just extend it and definitely watch when it actually gets back into that channel. That's when you usually, that's when I oftentimes see it really start to rock again. Just saying unscientific. You probably will not see that in any classic books of TA, but I've, I found it to be the case quite often. Um, C98, whatever it is, kind of reminds me of C60. Uh, so C98 versus Bitcoin. Um, trying to push it pushed hard yesterday. Didn't make it. It's dumping right now. Um, but watch this one. These indicators are not totally giving up. It's staying above the two moving average. It is not at the bottom of the RSI cave. It has taken some red candles, but it's definitely got some fight in it. C98 versus Bitcoin. This is one that I really am watching to try to get some stats on. This is a good, nice, clean dump. I like it. Um, let's keep an eye on this one. Uh, when this one turns up, uh, the directional X is in, is in the green. ADX is in the right spot. Watch for this crazy indicator to begin to uh, to uh, slacken towards a positive turn. When you start seeing some green candles, especially some green candles with white golf balls, boom. And you can actually adjust this thing. One of the things that I do here, um, if I can get this one to adjust, where are you at? Um, is this right here? Okay. I, oh shit, sorry about that. Um, something I do. 
um, with this one here, okay, is this. Um, I like my green, I like, I like these colors, but what I do is, where is it at? Inputs, a length of 20 is gonna do you real, real well. Do that, that comes from blockchain education. Um, and somewhere, I think maybe color, you, you, you can adjust the little circles for which show velocity. You can adjust those. I like to make them white so you can see them really, really clear. So watch for when uh, that, that shows you you're really moving. So seriously, I'm watching C98 versus BTC for a possible move back up. Um, I'm watching. I'm watching real close. SHIB versus USDT. Pure. Well, you know what? It's just dumping. It just doesn't look at that. It's on a downtrend. You know, it's on a strong. It's been on a strong downtrend. I love your ship. You're amazing. I think it's an amazing project. Sorry, haters, if you don't like it. I think ship's freaking cool. Um, it's what it's what it's what Doge will never be. Uh, it just cannot pull up. It's not even trying yet. Mana, mana, Decentraland versus USDT, um, which is where all the globalists want us to be uh, plugged into with our VR headsets, just sitting there, kind of you know drooling and with like uh, you know eating our fake meat and stuff. So anyway, <laughs> Decentraland, the just the, the the coin of the dystopian future. Um, well, here it is. Boom! It's trying. It's made some break breaks above. If you if you caught this run here, you really made some money. Anyway, it couldn't hold the 200 moving average from the 45 minute chart dump below the bottom of the RSI cave. Indicators are definitely beginning to. This is a sharp dump. Um, but these indicators, uh, the stochastic RSI, which an oscillator. I like when the stochastic RSI and the oscillator actually do agree. They're both saying oversold. Um, which an the the uh, squeeze indicator here is showing. Um, Good deal of downwards velocity, but we are bouncing at the bottom of the RSI cave. That's a spot where that could happen. Playing this before it's above the two moving average is probably not very smart. But if a person also the KRI is tangenting towards the green once again, um, the directional index is still in the red. Uh, I would watch this thing to begin to recover. Um, you know, just note that if it does start to recover and you do hop in for kind of a, a scalp trade, it will probably bounce off the 200 moving average and find that to be resistance. That would be the time to get out of it. A little bit of news, okay? Um, top, uh, Decrypt is a great site to follow. Um, and uh, I do I do post these news articles in um, Bitcoin Daily View, Telegram, uh, sometimes Discord. I'll get better with Discord along with a, a shit ton of memes. So uh, the top... Ten, the, the 10 public companies with the biggest Bitcoin portfolios, basically you can sum this up as the big companies are OTC buying the living crap out of uh, Bitcoin. They tweet about it. They don't, you know, they're not hiding it. They can't. They OTC buy so they don't, you know, affect the market because, I mean, you can see what. Um, you know, million dollar buys and stuff like this and stacks of 100K buys due to the market right here. So they don't want to, you know, they're, they're, they're OTC buying. And it wouldn't surprise me if these, um, you know, big chunks you see are oftentimes are, uh, you know, of course, they're usually institutional or, or exchanges or something like that, that have uh, um, algor that are algorithmically buying and trading. Um most likely, but still, that OTC volume has to kind of come from somewhere. Um, so ultimately, uh, they're OTC buying and they're not OTC selling. One of the things I'm going to start looking at here daily is the, um, and I kind of learned that from the, anyway, what I wanted to say was that basically you look at the average of averages that they're buying at, they, they're buying, you know, huge chunks. They're, they're public about it. The OTC, so they don't, you know, disrupt the market, uh, price action. Um, but they're buying the crap out of it. And, they're not even shy about it. They say they are doing it. And I don't mean, uh, believe me, I save the pessimistic bullshit. I don't even want to hear it. Um, I do not believe that they are buying to lose. And I think a lot of them know more than we do. Okay. And they are nonstop buying the crap out of it. So for whatever reason, whether it's to hedge against inflation, whether, you know, whatever, but if you look at the money they have in cash, and the deflation of the dollar, the hit that it's taking, um, and you look at Bitcoin, you know, to me, if for no other reason than to keep their cash valid, they are buying Bitcoin. And they're open, and like I say, it's OTC, so the price doesn't spike or dump with their buys and sells. But basically, you know, boom, there you go. Um, these guys aren't playing to lose, you know, they're not. And I would just say that uh, one of my, um, every cynical person I know who is broke or doesn't have the money that they want to have, I always, I always reference, why do you hate rich people rather than think like them? 
I think like wealthy people and, and the more I do, the, the better I do. So these wealthy companies are buying Bitcoin. There's a reason for it. And I do not believe personally it was to lose my take on it. Uh, Capriol's 2022 market outlook. I read this. Um, in general, one of the things that I got from it was I wanted to start looking at crypto quaint and some, they, they, they gave some good pointers here, things that we could look at daily, definitely like uh, cash, uh, uh, crypto inflow and, uh, and, uh, and, and stable coin inflow and outflow of the, um, to exchanges. Um, it's not necessarily written in stone because we're because we're in a, an ever changing market. You know, 2022 is a lot different than 2019 and 2020 and even 2021. So, you know, the world's changing fast in crypto, but maybe there's some uh, glass node charts I could get um, that would be good to look at daily. Just because um, over like one percent of inflow or two percent, looking at if we watch daily the percent of inflow and outflow to the major exchanges of uh, stable coins and Bitcoin. It doesn't mean dump or pump for sure, but let's just say that it does mean sentiment, okay? Um, so there you go. Overall, it kind of sums up right here, their 2022 forecast. Um, we came into 2021 expecting a bull market, didn't happen. Crypto uh, got, a, got a bull market, just not to the extent that we thought it was going to, that they thought it was going to. Now we go into 2020 expecting a combination of four things, they say. A cyclical Bitcoin bear market, bearish, okay. Shallow Bitcoin cycles, neutral, okay. Um, a newfound pr uh, productive crypto ecosystem, bullish, definitely. You know, more and more crypto adoption. Um, an incredibly fragile microeconomic landscape whose underlying issues promote the very reason Bitcoin was created and encourage long-term uh, adoption, neutral bullish. So anyway, I think in reading this, you know, one of the things that they were saying definitely that I kind of gleaned from this is that... Uh, history is changing quickly, or you might say like history is being written quickly. Um, we need to aggressively in 2022 find hooks and measurements daily that we can use to tell what the mark, how the market is trending. And those may not, and old ones may not work, you know, as well as they did. Um, and then new ones we have not thought of will come. So we really need to be aggressive at finding hooks to measure the sentiment of the market. Okay. Anyway, with that said, everybody, um, uh, for every, let's actually take a look at Bitcoin before we go. Let's see how it's doing. What are you doing, Bitcoin? It's still, it's uh, 41,000. It's still, at least it's holding 40,000, you know? Um, and at least we can say that, at least to me, I, I think personally, there is some good, um, there is a good, I think there's previous support and resistance and, and, and FIB numbers that's, that do stick in different time zones at like for, for a 37, 38, 39K you know, bottom if we dump further, at least the spot that I'm going to put some limits in. Okay. With that said, remember for every Bitcoin Satoshi, you own a piece of shit, evil globalist, man, who are definitely on the move these days, cry. It screws up their plan. I think the most powerful, powerful, peaceful, revolutionary act you can make um, that has ever probably been able to have been done in history. This may sound crazy. I know I'm a bit of an extremist, but I believe this. Owning Bitcoin is the most powerful revolutionary act that is that you can do today. So one sap means a lot. It's exponential in the uh, in the statement in a belief of the positive future for of a positive sci-fi future for humanity. That's not basically just you know a globalist boot on our next forever in a technocratic hell. So take care, everybody.